Let's sit together. And align our energy with our breathing system. We're taking a deep breath in. A deep breath out. And repeating this at least thrice to see that we have woken up from our sleep. We are fresh and we're ready to center our attention with the blessings of our masters, our angels, our guardians, our spirit guides and heal this beautiful girl, Sunaina, who we can imagine is in front of us. So as your breathing is complete and you're now more energized, you can rub your hands together to generate the heat, the healing. And let's all imagine Sunaina in a pink ball in between all of us. We are on all the sides of the balls. And our hands are going towards her, blessing her. Let the tingling in your hands continue as you keep sending blessings to her heart, her brain. Her brain needs so much of healing for all the rewiring, reprogramming, reconnections. Whichever nerve had burst is getting aligned, joined back again. Whatever blood was lost anywhere, went anywhere beyond its boundaries, goes back to where it's supposed to flow. All the accumulated blood around, which was dry or however, is being magically cleaned by the hand of the healing God, by the hands of our healing energy. Everything is being reconstructed, rewired, reprogrammed. Her heart that is working less, was working less, is now working on its full capacity as each one of us continue to heal her heart chakra, her heart. And let's imagine her Sahastra chakra and her eye chakra taking in all the love, light and energy that we and many healers across the world, whoever is sending healing for anyone today, may that be directed towards her and people like her who are struggling, who are battling. Who are required by the loved ones Keep healing. Even though we all know that souls are eternal, We need the and the mind, the love of our loved ones. So even though she has chosen to exit function, but there's so much work done. He will heal others when we go to sleep.
let's continue to heal her this beautiful pink ball of bubble of healing energy which is activated by the five of us here on a soul level we know that the connections are forever those who go we definitely meet in this life or the others but having said that every soul inhabits a body and when these bodies are of young people they have duties towards others and to lose a loved one can be traumatic to save the loved ones from the trauma that they may carry on in this entire life we need to heal those three those many bodies who are connected with the one that is actually struggling hanging by a single thread so may all of our healing go towards anena this morning and people like anena working on their brain working on their heart working on so much doctors can say whatever but the healers know the language of love and light the power of love and light let's activate our beautiful power raise our consciousness and heal this beautiful soul inside and outside so many damages are done on her brain on her heart on her body but when all of us request our own masters our own angels our own guardians our own ancestors our own loved ones the collective power of them we direct them towards sunaina in pune so in agarwal 45 female in pune in ruby hospital in the iccu we can send the healing so much now imagine that all of us with our angels with our guardians are standing near her sending healing to her beautiful body a beautiful mind and brain a wonderfully beat beating heart and see that she is being reworked on by our beautiful angels what whatever where in there has happened is being repaired this very instant and the blood flow has normalized the energy flow has normalized and imagine her in under beautiful healing bluish white light coming from her sahasra chakra coming from her third eye chakra being activated by all of our healing and see all her chakras throat chakra heart chakra solar plexus sacral and root getting activated once again having their own shine the light was practically gone but now it's been reinstilled Now, after you're done, let's pray to the divine beings, the light beings. Whatever lessons are to be learned, may they be learned, guided, in some other fashion, not by making this particular soul suffer. Whatever karmic lessons she has gone through. may she release them with her life with her acts of love light and kindness compassion and empathy may this soul be given another chance in this same life 
to complete what she had come on Mother Earth for and let her journey not be cut short. Let's send healing light to her two children. So Ved 19, Gai 313, husband Kunal 48, her parents who have also lost their first and only son few years ago. Heal their hearts. Assure them that goodness prevails. That love and light prevail. Let the healing be complete, whole and complete, whole and complete, whole and complete. Thank you, light beings, for being with us in our healing journey. May you help us become better healers when we heal others beyond boundaries. May you make us all conduits, channels of spreading love and light. And so it is. So it is. And whenever you're ready, we can read this beautiful book, Same Soul, Many Bodies, and see what lesson do we get today in our journey. Chapter 11, Contemplation and Meditation. I'm daily making myself what I am. The quote comes from Robert Thurman, the eminent Buddhist scholar at Columbia University. And to me, it is an energizing thought. I love the concept of process and flux that it implies. Every day you are new. Your thoughts, your intentions, your actions, <clears throat> your awareness and perceptions are constantly evolving. And with each shift, a different message, with each shift, a different you emerges. You're not the same person you were five years ago or even five minutes ago. And neither are your loved ones, your friends or acquaintances. One result is that often we react to the old person and they react to us as we knew them. So that, for example, the high school bully remains a bully to us when we see him again, even though he might have found spiritual peace and the mildest manners and is the mildest mannered of men. So evolution isn't much good if you aren't aware of it. How can you mature if you don't see the process at work? How can you learn from life if you don't stop to experience it? How can you embody all that has happened to you physically and psychologically if you don't give your body and mind the time to ingest it? How can you change as your friends and change? The way to assess ourselves and others relaxed spiritual contemplation and meditation. And the time to start is always in the present. There's a difference between them. Although they're close kin, contemplation means concentrating on a specific object or subject. The idea of loving kindness, for example, or the beauty of a butterfly. Meditation requires keeping the mind completely blank in a state of mindfulness or awareness, free to accept whatever feelings, ideas, images or visions, enter it and letting associations flow to all aspects of the object or thought to understand its form, shape, color, a sense. It is the art of observing without thought, without mental comment. It is far easier to the Western, for the Western mind to practice contemplation. We are used to focusing our brains on a given subject, thinking about it and analyzing it. Meditation is more of an Eastern concept, difficult to grasp, requiring a great deal of practice. It takes months or years to be able to meditate whole-mindedly and you might not be able to fully master it in this one lifetime. This doesn't mean, however, that you shouldn't try meditating now. Remember... In this life, as in all others, you are consciously progressing towards immortality. The attempt itself brings its own profound rewards and you will soon find yourself looking forward to the time of aloneness and meditation requires. Aloneness that meditation requires. 
you might want to start with contemplation. And the object to concentrate one on is yourself. To find out who you are now, think of yourself in the moment. Let whatever thoughts you have about yourself, good and bad, enter your consciousness. Which negative or judgmental images and feelings would you discard as no longer accurate or valid? Which positive and self-healing impressions and feelings would you now add? What life experiences have shaped you more have, sh have shaped you more profoundly? When you have another life, what do you imagine who changes these come from these? What do you imagine would change from this one in another life? The point is not to like yourself or indeed pass judgment of any kind on anybody. You're trying to see what is really there beneath the camouflage of the person you show to the world. Who are you deeply inside? Consider the significant people in your life. Are your images of them outdated? Has your own experience taught you to look at them in too differently? How have they changed as you yourself have changed? How will these changes lead you to modify your relationship with them in a more positive, understanding and loving manner? How will they facilitate further change? We are all works in progress, moving at different speeds along our spiritual paths, but daily we should pause to involve the creative mind on the core concept that can shape us as human wishing to rise towards the one. Love, joy, peace and God. Contemplation and meditation aren't easy. For the future inward you go, the more deeply felt will be your understanding. And going deep requires digging through layers of defenses. We are so disciplined to think and analyze that attempts to clear or empty the mind defy our training. Yet, analysis is counter to contemplation and meditation and we must shed it as we begin to explore. It isn't enough to say to yourself, I'm ridding my mind of all things except the notion of loving kindness. Or going further, I'm reading my mind of all thoughts whatsoever and I'm aware of nothing and everything at once. In both cases, you will find yourself distracted by the outside world. You might be able to think about loving kindness for a while, but I'll bet that soon you will remember a time when you weren't kind or someone wasn't kind to you. And from that might come the thought, my God, it's mother's birthday and I forgot to call her. Or some other notion that whisks you back to everyday matters. And if you try to blank your mind entirely, you'll almost surely find it filling with mundane distractions, your nose itches, or there's the house fly in the room, or the thought that if you keep sitting much longer, you'll miss the return. Rerun of Sean Field. This, the, the present discussion is mostly about meditation, but how much of what follows is applicable to contemplation as well? Meditation stills the chatter that normally fills our minds and the resulting quiet allows us to observe without judgment, to reach a higher level of detachment and eventually to become aware of a higher state of consciousness. A simple exercise can demonstrate how difficult it is to keep our mind devoid of thoughts, feelings, to-do lists, physical discomforts, everyday worries or household or business concerns. After reading this paragraph, close your eyes for a minute or two. I suggest sitting in a comfortable chair on the comfortable cushion or in bed. Be as comfortable as possible. So again, dear friends, close your eyes and get as comfortable as possible. Take few conscious deep breaths in. Exhaling away all the stresses and tensions you carry around in your body. Even though right now you have just slept and woken up. Yet there are some tensions and stresses you carry. So as you take a deep breath in, fill yourself with positivity and as you exhale, release the tension, the stress. Keep working on it. Keep trying to keep your mind calm and think of nothing. But if I say, don't think of beautiful sunsets or gentle seas, I know this is what you imagined. 
So simply be in touch with your breath, breath flowing in, breath flowing out. Savor the relaxation and the pleasure of just flowing, of just breathing. If you wish, you can open your eyes again. We keep meditating, so it's not new for us. Dr. Brian Weiss says, you might have thought about how silly you looked holding an open book with your eyes closed, or then perhaps about a report. Would you make the deadline for it? Did you forget the mint jelly for the leg of the lamb you are serving yesterday tonight? The stress of today's world seemed to intrude constantly into our daily lives and in an artificial seeming environment, in solitude, in the dark and silent room. They seem to pummel us. Under the barrage of stress, the physical body seems to function at a higher level of alertness. The so-called fight or flight reaction, triggering a host of psychological reactions. You might even feel fear, thinking that the silence is somewhat threatening. Many of us are on the radio television as soon as we get home, often to ward off the dread of the assault of thoughts of memories. So how long have you been sitting still? Five minutes? It seems a good start. You tell yourself, though you know it isn't, perhaps you'll be able to give yourself another minute or so tomorrow, as your meditation was something to endure. Maybe not tell yourself the next day you'd rather meditate, you'll contemplate. Not yourself, it is too dangerous to begin there, but as Dr. Vai suggests, you'll, Vai suggests, you'll concentrate on loving kindness. Contemplation you have read will engage your mind, leading you a deeper understanding of kindness in today's session. Since this is its subject, eventually leading to yourself and the life around you, and understanding leads to freedom, joy, self, fulfillment, and better relationships, that is happiness. To contemplate a thought or concept is to focus on its meaning. And as noted, it's easier than emptying the mind and observing a sense of meditation. As you focus, different levels of meaning will emerge. Also, mental associations with the core object or concept will lead you down further avenues of insight and understanding. It is okay to think during contemplation as long as you keep your focus. What images does the term loving-kindness conjure up? Perhaps a person, your mother, grandmother, or some act you did spontaneously, or some act you were the recipient of, maybe a feeling, a warmth that pervades your body and brings forth a tear of happiness. Once you have located the feeling or image, you'll come to an understanding of the more general definition or the phrase, general definition of the phrase, Loving kindness is a spiritual act and to focus on the spiritual can be extremely rewarding. Your entire value system will change for the better if loving kindness resides at the base of it. You will find that tears and anxieties are reduced or even eliminated. Your thought process will lead you from your basic definition to a clearer understanding of your spiritual nature. You see, you're contemplating yourself after all. In time with awareness of what the spiritual essence is, a sense of inner peace, patience, balance and harmony will manifest itself in your daily life. Physical benefits also accrue. With the diminution of fear and anxiety and the arrival of inner tranquility, the body is strengthened, the immune system is enhanced. I've seen chronic illnesses alleviated in the bodies of patients whose minds are at peace. Some people have noted energy shifts when insights and understandings emerge. The mind and body are so intimately connected that healing one heals the other. Sometimes when you focus as a concept, you may discover that what comes up differs from what you, training, education or history has taught you. This is to be expected since we have all been indoctrinated with the belief systems and values of our families, teachers, cultures and religions that you now see things in a new way it will not hurt you keeping an open mind is essential if you can attune your mind to different ideas and new possibilities the learning process can continue perhaps what you were taught as a baby or child is not what you're experiencing now how can you know unless your mind is active and aware 
How can you awaken to a deeper or more meaningful reality unless you allow your mind to function in an open manner? Making no judgments until you have mentally tested every option for yourself. Try not to dismiss or discard ideas or brush aside what you believe because they are different from what you were led to believe. It is possible that the strange might be true, but familiar false. When you contemplate, take your time. By definition, contemplation implies an unhurried mental focus. Your mind must reflect on its responses and perhaps add another reflection and response to the first and then another and then another. You may find memories popping into your awareness like stars in the, like stars in the early evening sky. You may experience sudden clarifying insights with their attendant healing effects. I recommend one thing at a time. To ensure that you receive, that you provide the proper depth and duration to your experience. Even then, it is unlikely that one session will bring you to the core of the object or concept being contemplated. You can and should return to the object or concept until you master it, fully understand it, and are aware of the changes within that area that it was wrought. It is then that you will be amazed and delighted at the beauty and power of your insights, liberated by the healing effects of your understanding. When you believe you have found the core, don't stop your contemplation. Begin a new contemplation on the same concept the following day. Close your eyes and take a few relaxing breaths. Dear friends, again, let's close our eyes. Dr. Brian Weiss is guiding us into a meditation. So let's close our eyes and take a few relaxing breaths. Normal breath in, normal breath out. No reason to make it more deeper or shallow. Let it flow the way it is. Just breathe in at least thrice four times. Imagine you can actually exhale the tensions and stresses in your body and that you are inhaling pure healing energy. So as you take a deep breath in, keep filling your body with positivity, with love and light. As you exhale, release all the tension, the stress and any knotted muscles or any thought which was making you think too much. When you're inhaling in pure, beautiful healing energy, your body is relaxing. Relax your muscles and let the core of the concept or object reappear in your awareness. Be aware of this healing energy flowing in you, relaxing you, making you more conscious and all the muck and the dirt which was stored up is leaving your body. Now consider all levels of meaning that has thought or object which holds for you, like loving kindness, which is a profound spiritual concept. There is no profundity to a butterfly's beauty. She's so beautiful. When you add loving kindness in yourself so completely with every breath in and release all that struggling with, with lack of love and now you're left with just nothing but pure love. How would your life change with your new understanding? With this new relationship with compassion, with empathy, with loving kindness? How will your life change? How will your relationship change? How would your values change? In every way, are you operating from loving kindness? Being. Whatever you're experiencing is there for you as a gift. 
and in case your mind wanders and loses focus don't judge yourself it's normal thoughts are meant to be drifted away and if you get, get gently back aligned with your thought with your breathing work you'll be back at it as we continue to keep practicing we will notice that even if our mind strays there is no tension we are still connected to the original thought in psychiatry it's called the free association the more each of us practice the easier it becomes to maintain focus and deeper and becoming more profound with our understanding so if there are any frustrations let them float away let them leave with your out breath don't force yourself don't compel yourself to sit and contemplate if the outside world is too much with you if there is movement happening around you and you're not able to make it it's all right you can try again later pleasure is a vital component to cont contemplation meditation purpose is to be aligned to be free to not to be stuck with any chains and whenever you think you're ready you can open your eyes and your mind has returned to every consciousness and this time this moment back with dr brian wise's words and dear friends it's beautiful if you can journal whatever experience you went through or if not journal then open your whatsapp and send yourself a voice note make a group with yourself and one loved one and after that you can delete the loved one and this the whatsapp group will be just for you with you and yourself so you can always add thursday in my meditation this feeling came this thought came friday this that way you will start observing today i could go into meditation for 10 minutes 6 minutes 7 minutes and if you're the thoughts who's little anxious then it's all right maybe you can give yourself an alarm after 15 minutes alarm must ring wonderful wednesday so this is the meditation i went many people find it fascinating to return to the concept weeks or months after they have mastered and it to compare this journey with the previous one there are no rules in this regard trust your intuitive wisdom as a christian mystic pierre tell hardy shardin says you're not a human being having a spiritual experience you're a spiritual being having a human experience there is meaning in everything and purity of spirit when you find it as rewarding as contemplation is meditation is still the means for going as deeply into the spiritual realm as is humanly possible here you're not bound by single concept or confined by concentration rather you're saying to your mind body and soul you are free to go wherever you want in your search for spiritual progression you're not constrained by time or place but can travel to the past or the future to lands known or unknown to places as small as a human heart or as vast as the universe believe me there is no more inspiring journey i've written a book entirely on meditation meditation achieving inner peace and tranquility in your life yet i have not come close to achieving the wisdom and spiritual peace described by the yogis and monks of asia who have spent their entire lives devoted to it for me and for you the point is not to reach meditative perfection but to get as much out of the practice as we can to use it as one of the many tools in our evolution to point us towards spirituality and to help us therapeutically before i met catherine my medical education had followed orthodox lines and my psychiatric training had been by the book traditional but after my experience with her i began to explore alternative therapies it was during this quest that i learned the value of meditation like hypnosis which i use as a tool to regress patients to the deep lives meditation develops the ability to open the mind to the deepest most hidden influences on our bodies and souls whether they come from past present or future paradoxically by thinking of nothing by clearing the mind we are free to remember the memories of past present and future lives help us locate the origins of our traumas and once they reveal to us we can recognize that our fears come from another place and are no longer a threat 
I have had memories of my own past life during deep meditation and thereby gained insights into my behavior, my defenses, my fears. I would not be as self-knowing as I am today and there is lots more to learn if I had not meditated. We can always use meditation to resolve personal conflicts and difficult relationships or to help the heart to heal. But eventually, for all of us, the primary purpose of meditation is to achieve inner peace and balance through spirituality. Monks can meditate for hours. You start with 20 minutes. Sit comfortably or lie down if you wish. Though there is a possibility of falling asleep, close your eyes. If you want to do this, you can do this with me. I'm happy to do this. So maybe you can lie down. Maybe if you're seated, it's fine. Close your eyes. Breathe slowly, regularly, deeply. Be aware of your breath flowing in and flowing out. Now locate any areas of tension in your body. And send your body a message. Everything is fine. Everything is at peace. Relax. Let scattered thoughts and everyday concerns flow gently out of your mind. Block out the clamoring voices of work, family, obligation, responsibilities, or whatever is assailing your mind right now, one by one if required. Everything is fine. Everything is happening the way it's meant to happen. There's always the right time and the right place for everything. Mentally watch them vanish as you affirm this to yourself. Lift this moment, carpe diem, seize this moment. This precious, beautiful, unique moment of grace, light, freedom. By surrendering to this moment. The present is the only place we can find happiness, joy, peace, freedom. Psycho-spiritual practices emphasizes mindfulness. Just the way we did it right now, letting go of all uncertainties, assuring ourselves that everything is happening rightly. Now, whenever you're ready, you can again open your eyes with a gratitude expression to whoever you desire to express. In my case here, it will be to Dr. Brian Weiss and to, of course, our ourselves, the light beings. The human mind is a creative masterpiece. By giving it rain, it can transport us to heights of joy. Mindfulness is the awareness of those thoughts, emotions, feelings and perceptions that are occupying us now and only now. By eliminating the distraction of the immediate past and worries about the future, the act of meditating opens the door to inner peace and health. By carrying us from everyday awareness into the mindfulness of the present moment, only this moment, this precise instant, and thus into the spiritual values that elevate our soul. Meditation frees us to go anywhere. Along the way, we may gain clarity about a present trauma, a past or future life, or an unconscious denial of the nature of our problems. That is meditation's therapeutic value. The unaware becomes aware. But it may stop, simply illuminate the reality of the beauty of the moment and all the wonder it contains. This is what is called insight. And it is how we come to ultimate reality. Here is an illustration of mindfulness. I was teaching a patient of mine, Linda, how to meditate. One day she came to me in great excitement. I just saw the most beautiful tree, she said. Where? I asked, intrigued. Why? In front of my house. 
Meditation had opened Linda's eyes to beauty that had been within her reach all the time. Only she had neglected to see it. Linda, a grade school teacher, was habitually rushing because she was late to her classes, but meditation had taught her to slow down. Stephen Rex Tatkin, the director of the Omega Institute in Rhineback, New York, tells of the time that he was in his office discussing a business problem with a colleague. It was a beautiful spring day, and from his window, he could see a guest at the Institute, the Vietnamese Buddhist monk and philosopher Thich Nhat Han, walking across the lawn. With each step, he was kissing the earth. He was totally present, obviously immersed only in the act of walking. I could almost feel him savoring each moment, feel the sensation of grass on soul, feel the way his body seemed at one with each moment, movement. Tishnan Han was living in the moment just as Linda had learned to do. In Us the Monk writes, there is a river of feelings in which every drop of water is a different feeling. And each feeling relies on all the others for its existence. To observe it, we sit, sit on the bank of the river and identify each feeling as it surfaces, flows by and disappears. When we meditate, we're sitting on the river bank. In meditation, achieving inner peace and tranquility in your life, I share a message that came to me in a meditation which might be similar to one of your own. With love and understanding comes the perspective of infinite patience. What's your hurry? There is no time anyway. It only feels that way to you. When you're not experiencing the present, when you're absorbed in the past or worried about the future, you bring great heartache and grief to yourself. Time is an illusion too. Even in the three-dimensional world, the future is only a system of probabilities. Why do you worry so? The past must be remembered and then forgotten. Let it go. This is true for childhood and past life dramas, but it's also true for attitudes, misconceptions, belief systems that have been drummed into you and for all the old thoughts, indeed for all thoughts. How can you see freshly and clearly with those thoughts? What if you needed to learn something new and with a fresh perspective? Stop thinking. Instead, use your intuitive wisdom to experience love again. Meditate. See that everything is interconnected. See your true self. See God. Meditation and visualization will help you to think, will stop thinking so much and you will be begin the journey back. Healing will occur. Begin to use your unused mind. You will see. You will understand. You will grow wise. And then there will be peace. The only thing I'd add now is what I've learned since the passage was written. You will only begin the journey back, but you will be the journey into the future. Sorry, you will not only begin the journey back, but you will begin the journey into the future. Meditation can help us tap into the healing powers with us. Not only psychic healing, but physical healing as well. More and more physicians are acknowledging that we can fight diseases, even when serious, even very serious ones, with a recently discovered medicine, the curative powers that lie within our spiritual nature. Recently discovered in the West, that is, Eastern doctors have known about it for centuries. Perhaps this is true holistic medicine where we energize the entire organism and stress the body. There is now ample proof in Head First, the biology of hope and the healing power of the human spirit. Dutton, in 1989, Norman Cousins details how emotions affect the immune system. Researchers at Harvard have found that meditation can prolong life in the elderly and doctors in England found that diet, exercise and the practice of stress reduction techniques of which meditation is amongst the most important can actually reverse coronary artery disease. Diet and exercise alone won't do it. The power of prayers on healing has also been documented. Not only one's own prayers and prayers by family and friends, but the prayers of strangers. In 1982, for instance, 393 patients in the coronary care unit of San Francisco General Hospital were randomly selected to either receive or not receive intercessory prayers. 
Neither the patients nor the doctors nor the nurses knew which group was which. The patients who received prayers had less need of CPR, mechanical ventilators, diuretics and antibiotics and there were fewer instances of pulmonary edema and even fewer deaths. In a study conducted by the Duke University of the Durham Veteran Affairs Medical Center, heart patients who were prayed for by seven different religious groups from various places of the globe had better outcomes than those receiving traditional medicine treatment alone. A study of patients with advanced AIDS found that when people prayed for them afar without the AIDS victim AIDS, even knowing they were being prayed for, they experienced few and less severe AIDS releases illnesses, few and shorter hospitalizations, and less depression. I teach my patients meditation techniques that can reduce insomnia, help with weight control, smoking cessation, stress reduction, fighting infections and chronic illnesses, and lowering blood pressure. The technique works because the chemistry and physics of the body are influenced by mental and physical energies. Regular meditation is a priceless tool for the recovery and maintenance of health. Meditation can open up possibilities for spiritual experiences since the subconscious mind is one of the gateways to the external, eternal dimension. The gateway is never wide open and there are no signs that advise us where the road will lead. No code or magic word will open it. It is an interior process of transforming and being transformed. Put differently, the mind is a passage and through meditation you will in time be possessed of a map by which you will be able to find your way along that passage into deeper and more transcendent states. Meditation might bring you to heightened awareness of your spiritual ascents and to a state of profound ecstasy, lightness, satisfaction and well-being that comes when we can contact our deepest dimension. Meditation allows a feeling of bliss to spread through you when you're contemplating a concept or object that gives you pleasure. It may bring you back to a past life or ahead of a future one. The lessons of each will be clearer to you when you enter them. When you come to awareness, you will find yourself compassionate and loving without expecting anything in return. You will feel a oneness with every other person and being with nature, with the sky and sea, with all there is. For however long you are in this altered state, you will experience the ultimate high, a feeling unique in each individual yet common to the souls who are further along on their evolutionary journey. Some of my patients have told me that during meditation they detach from their physical bodies and float above themselves, watching themselves from another realm. The same out-of-body experience exported, reported by people who have returned from near death. You may share that experience of or have adventures and yet unreported by anyone. One thing is certain, you will discover your most powerful and essential self. Beautiful. So we left with three more chapters, which means three more days, three more mornings. Today being a Wednesday, I think Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Saturday, we should get over with this book and... Um, Sunday, of course, we have a break. And Monday, we'll begin yet another book. So that's about it. And I thank each one of you for joining me in sending healing vibration to Sunena. And we just read about this right now also, that how uh, multiple groups work on healing. And I've already activated my crystal group and my Akashic reading group. So let's keep activating whichever groups we want. You have my permission if you want to activate it somewhere. And I'm sure that things are going to be getting better. Even though the doctors say she's hanging by a thread and she's very, very, very critical, they say. I still believe that magics happen. And together we can help her recover. Because even though we know the, the body is eternal, the sorry, the soul is eternal, but this body that the soul lives in has relationships. And right now, Sunena needs to serve her family with love and light. She has a 13-year-old little daughter. She's lost her first daughter when she was a year old. So, But now she was blessed with Gayatri, who's 13 now, and Subed, who's 19. So Subed is back in India. He flew the first flight out from America. He's in Purdue. And um, I know that 
together we can help Kunal Bhyasunena, Suvedan Gayatri to live a life together with joy, happiness and love and not cut their story short. So let's become believers and I will keep updating you all every morning. And together let's keep healing her towards normalcy, towards spirituality. So much of gratitude towards each one of you. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. With bowed heads, a lot of gratitude. Prachi, yes. we are always there with you. Please don't hesitate and tell us whenever, whatever to be done, we'll be doing it. Yes. Yes. You be strong. You need to be strong to do all this. You be strong. Yes. Yes. We will do it. We have yes. that courage. We have the faith. We will do it. Don't worry. Yes, we will. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll see you tomorrow morning at 6. Thank yeah. you so much. Take care. You too. Have a blessed day.